everyone and welcome to today's video in which we're going to be learning a little bit more about Bruce's adaptations. So firstly, let's start with the most famous of all skunk adaptations. And yes, this is their impressive... The, there's a Robin right above the camera and he's just going for it. And yes, this is their very, very impressive scent that they can produce. So when a skunk is threatened, if it's um, very threatened, the first thing it will do is it will lift its tail, turn and spray. So if they're incredibly threatened, they will do this straight away. Now, if they're not too sure what's going on, what they would do is they will um, firstly stomp their feet. So Bruce does this sometimes if uh, he we are taking him by surprise, if we've come into the enclosure and he wasn't expecting it, um, or if it's first thing in the morning he's just come outside, he will stomp his little feet at us. What skunks will do next is they will put their tail in the air, they'll stomp their feet and then they'll drag their feet towards them like this. Um, and that's like their second morning. And then the third thing they're gonna do is they're gonna turn and then they will start to spray. Now, this scent smell is a really, really, really horrible smell. Um, they have two glands, um, one on either side of their bum and they're the glands that empty when they spray. It's, their scent glands can become um, blocked and then they will need to be drained. Now our last skunk, um, Pepe, his scent glands needed to be drained whilst he wasn't very well. Uh, so we took him to the vets and had them drained. And then this fluid then had to go straight away into the vet's freezer um, to stop it trying to smell the entire practice out. And even then, it still smelled. It's, uh, it needs to be burnt as soon as possible. It's a really, really horrible smell. So a really incredible fact about their scent glands is that they are able to spray with a really high degree of accuracy so they can spray um, up to three meters and they have a very very high level of accuracy when spraying as well. Other ways in which skunks have adapted so they have a naturally very long tail and when they're looking to spray they lift this tail very far out of the way of the scent. They don't actually like the the smell that they produce themselves so they try and lift their tail as far out the way as possible. In fact, uh, when we have to restrain a skunk, which um, for us isn't very often, but if we had to restrain a skunk in an emergency, you would actually tuck their tail underneath their body because um, they are less likely to spray because they don't want to spray themselves. That's how much they don't like the smell. When they stick this tail in the air as well, um, it also puffs out quite nice and big. So again, that looks quite threatening for other animals. They've made themselves appear to be bigger than they are. Uh, so that is another form of defense. Hi, Brucey boy. Would you like some bugs? Have some bugs. So this unique form of defense is obviously the one that skunks are most famous for. Um, and it is their, their best form of defense. Now they have a few other forms of defense as well. So they have incredibly sharp teeth. So they will bite something if they are threatened as well. But the first thing they're going to do is spray. And they do have claws, but they don't normally use these um, as a form of defense. Their front claws are um, longer and slightly wider and fatter than their back claws. And they use these front claws for digging. So as you can see at the moment, Bruce is sniffing around, trying to find some of the millworms I scattered around for him. And when he finds a spot that he particularly likes, he might start trying to dig in there just to see if he can get the millworms out. So he does have claws, but he doesn't really use them for defense um, particularly. So skunks do have a very good sense of hearing as well. In fact, eyesight is probably their weakest of all the senses, um, but hearing and smelling are very, very good. So when we wake Bruce up in the morning, normally if he's not already awake, when we come around the corner to his enclosure, we call his name and he comes running out. So he's got a very good sense of hearing as well. So another adaptation, which isn't um, related to defense, is their ability to go into this semi-hibernation, this torpor. And what this does is it enables a skunk to survive over a very harsh winter with not a lot of food because they're able to go into this very deep sleep and they're able to use a lot of their body fat for food instead. Now, as I mentioned, it's not a true hibernation. So um, they don't do, they don't only sleep, they do get up and try and find food. But if a winter is particularly harsh, it gives them a better chance at surviving than some other animals. So we're reaching the end of the video now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you've learned a thing or two about skunks. 
thank you also for sending in your videos. We've been really enjoying watching those and the animals have really loved seeing them as well. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.